Well, blessings and abundance to everyone. Good morning. God bless you and welcome to the Way Life Center's Love Stream with yours truly, Apostle Kerry Pope. And I pray that this Sunday morning is a blessed one for you. Hey, I know you enjoy the extra hour of sleep because you fell back last night. Some of you may be dragging this morning, but it's time to get up. There's a word for you. And so uh, we're finally coming into uh, election time, two days away. I don't know what candidate you're going to vote for, but I do encourage you to vote. That's your constitutional right. People bled and died for you to have that ability to do so. And so I just want to just say vote, vote, vote. Your voice counts. All right. It does. It does. So as you come on this morning, get your pen and pad ready. Have some great information for you. I uh, just want you to understand we're two months away from 2021. And I know this has been a very interesting year with the uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, and the pandemic, and all that has been going on. And, 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 and we're seeing cases continue to spike throughout the United States. So please protect yourself, wear your mask, do your part to make sure you don't uh, attend super spreader events. Um, be careful, please. It's vital that you be careful because we want to see you in 2021 living your best life. Okay. Well, listen. Get, get your pen and pad. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm excited about this today. So let's go right on into the scripture text and then we're going to get ready. The scripture text is found in Psalms 139, 13 and verse 14. And it reads, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. So this morning's message, I simply titled it, I Believe in You. We believe in you here at the Way Life Center. We believe in you. Why is this message so important? We look at it now. We're 11 months into this year, just two more months to go. And so many people feel like this has been a wasted year. You were unable to accomplish the things that you set out when you came into 2020. You, some of you have, may have dealt with COVID, may have been sick from it. You're feeling the, il uh, the ailments of it. And now you're looking at 2021 that's quickly coming and you feel like I'm a failure. I haven't accomplished any of the things. I feel like I've gone backwards, as a matter of fact, versus coming forward. But what I've learned is there's a, a key word to failure that many people feel and it's called reject, rejection or rejected. Now, how many of you have felt rejected? Like you, you're afraid to move forward because you're afraid of being rejected. Now, I don't know about you, but I've experienced rejection in my lifetime, and it is not a good feeling. Being made to feel that you're not good enough, being made to feel like there's others that are far better than you, that can do a better job than you, but yet God called you to do the very thing you're setting out to do. This morning's message is to encourage you that I believe in you. God gave me this message to tell you that I believe in you because he believes in you. He has set you forward to do the very things that he called you to do, but you are lacking the courage to do so because you failed. Hey, let's, let's be real. We all have failed. Many times have we failed. But what makes the difference, as my therapist said to me, is that the resilience inside of you to get up and keep going and not to accept the fact that you are a failure because you're not. I believe in you this morning simply because you are unique and you are specially designed by God to do what he called you to do. So let's just go look at what the word reject means. If we say that you feel rejection or rejected, then what does the word reject mean? Reject is defined as dismissed as inadequate, inappropriate, or not to one's taste. My God, does that, does that sound like you? You feel inadequate, like you don't have the necessary tools to accomplish what God has for you. And then you feel what? Inappropriate. You feel as though you're not appropriate for the situation or the circumstance. And then you feel like that you, you know, I'm not to their taste. You may be in a relationship. Someone didn't want you because you are not their taste. But guess what? If I'm not your taste, I'm somebody else's, that's for sure. Let's keep going. Reject is also a person or thing dismissed as failing to meet standards or satisfy taste. Does that sound like you this morning? Have you found yourself feeling inadequate because you didn't feel you was uh, up to the job or up to the task that was before you? 
when really you was probably overqualified, but you didn't have the confidence to do what God called you to do. I remember, and I stated many times in my videos that throughout my growing up, I didn't feel smart enough. I didn't feel like I had what it took because there were not people around me like myself for you that said, Carrie, I believe in you. I've always been very inquisitive. I've always been very intuitive. I've always been very intellectual. But I never really gave the, myself the credit that, hey, Pope, you're smart. And it was only until I've, I've got actually in my latter ages, in my 40s, that I really bought into the fact that you're smart. I recall uh, dropping out of college in my early teens to get married. And as I, if you heard me say before, I got married young because that was said it was best for me to do. And, and so I dropped out of college. Mind you, I was very gifted in music. I've been playing music all my life. Went to, went to college on a music scholarship, uh, played saxophone, bass guitar, lead guitar, drums, keyboards, um, percussions. Was very multi-talented, but not realizing that my gift is not just a gift, but there's smarts that go with the gifting. There's intellectual, uh, in, there's been intellectual in, in giftings with music. And so I recall as I got older, I wanted to go back to college. I wanted to go back and obtain my degree. And it was in my late 40s that I went back to college. Why am I saying this today? Because somebody watching this morning wants to go back and finish your education. You want to go back and finish what you started. And I encourage you to do so. And I recall when I was in my freshman year of college, I had to start all over with just the remedial classes. They gave me a test and I, and I passed the test with flying colors. So it put me in more advanced classes, but I still had to meet my business degree. I had to go through all the classes necessary. Mind you, I did this um, online. So that meant that I had to still work my regular job, still raise my family, still pastor my church while still yet earning my degree. And so, when I got to the latter part of my degree, one day my, 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 my spirit said, look at your grades. Look at your GPA. Now, mind you, I'm in my late 40s. Now I'm looking at a GPA of 4.00. Wait a minute. That's a great GPA. And it hit me, Pope, you are smart. You're not a failure. You, 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 know, you started to then, but I started to then believe in myself and I started to seeing that I could accomplish the very thing that God had for me. And it was only until I met a Miss Rebecca Lynn Pope and that my GPA fell to a 3.95 because that summer, you know, that I met her in 2015, she messed me up, guys. It's her fault. When I finally graduated, I graduated 3.975 GPA, uh, graduated some, uh, 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 in my class. Summa cum laude, I think is what they call it. I was very, uh, one of the honor roll students and um, I was smart. And even to this day now, I now, anything I set my mind to do, I can do it because I now know who I am and what I'm able to accomplish because I don't, I, I didn't buy into the, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough. No, I believed in myself, which allowed me to then Turn around and tell you, if I can do it, you can too, because I believe in you. Look at this quote. It says, nobody likes being rejected, but rejection does not mean that there is something wrong with you. Rejection is only damaging. And I guess this now, rejection is only damaging when you start believing you are not complete. Oh my goodness. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like you were at a deadlock position? You fail, forfeit you, you forfeited your life, your, your epic fail, you got debt, you got pitfalls, you got all these various things. You look like this when you look at your life. You look like you cannot accomplish anything. You know why? Because you bought into the concept. It's a concept of thinking now that I'm a failure or it's too hard for me or this is not what I'm called to do. I want you to understand something this morning. That very thing that God has birthed into your spirit, being an entrepreneur, starting your own company, you know, going for it, whether you want to work for somebody but in a position of CEO, whatever it may be, you have the ability to do it. But if you buy into the mindset because one person denied you or rejected you that you are failure, 
if you buy into that concept, you're going to find yourself being just that, a failure. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not a failure. I don't care if I had some failing situations in my life, and I have. I'm not defined as a failure, nor will I let that concept. You know, as a man think it, so is he. And many of you watching me right now on this new day of a time falling back, you're going, this year is almost over with and I've failed. No, you haven't. You have yet to really tap into the resources of who you are because you're so bought into a concept that maybe this is not what I need. That's not the concept you should be buying into, my dear. You should buy into the fact that God has greater for me and failure, if anything, gave me a, what I call experience. You know, the, the, I think the word of God tells us over in 1 Corinthians, or, or maybe it be later, the other scripture, it says, suffering worketh patience, patience worketh experience, that's Romans, excuse me, suffering worketh patience, patience worketh experience, experience worketh hope. See, you got to understand that out of all of your suffering, out of all of your failures, what you're actually gaining is experience. See, how can you tell somebody how to overcome something if you've never experienced it? I tell people all the time, uh, the other day God was sharing something with me when I was talking to a good friend of mine, and, and, and he and this young lady we were talking, uh, and her husband had committed suicide. He had PTSD from the Vietnam War. And many of the church people, many of the Christians said, well, he's going to hell because, you know, he killed himself. And if you buy into the concept of, of suicide and hell, then you automatically put people there. But then God said something to me. He says, how can you help deliver somebody from something that you don't understand? Remember the scripture said, in all thy getting, get an understanding. And to get an understanding, that means you got to start looking into the person who's struggling and understanding what it is about what they're going through that's causing that concept of their thinking. And then, and only then, can you help them overcome, right? Because you got to study to show yourself approved. And so what does that mean? If you've gone through things in life and experienced failure, that failure has given you experience. I hear people say, I don't want to hear someone who's failed. I want to hear somebody who succeeded. But baby, let me say something to you. You better get this right now. Those people that you put on a pedestal of success have stories of failure. They, they can sit you down and talk to you about. Rebecca and I, if you ever listen to our videos, we go over and over and over the failures of our life. How can we, how can we talk to you about love? Because we failed in love, but only to still believe in love found each other and the love we share is an experience of failure we can share with you as now being successful you cannot you, you can't always seek out people who has been successful because they got a story to tell you how they got to success and to get to success ladies and gentlemen comes through a trail and a path of failure so y'all don't want to talk to me this morning many people have a tendency to always seek out successful people and I don't want to hear the person that has failed because I don't need to hear from you. You, you failed. But your successful people have story after story after story after story of failures that they have experienced. But it's through the experience that now has given them hope to keep going forward. And now they're walking in success because they learn from their mistakes. And guess what? They're still making mistakes as they go on. Let's look at this right here. This is very key. Let's look at the four types of rejection that a lot of people struggle with. Number one, familial rejection. Rejection from the families, okay? From rejection from one's family or origin. The familial one, the family structure, those that know you, those that know your background. Nothing's worse than somebody that's always in your family reminding you of your failures. You know, your daddy was a failure, you're just walking in his footsteps. Your mother was a failure, you're just walking in her footsteps. Oh, you know, the last time you tried something, you know what happened. I don't know why you always try new things. See, family can be sometimes your worst enemy. Somebody better say amen. It's not that you don't love your family, but your family doesn't always know what's best for you. 
They want you to succeed, but sometimes the very thing you should be doing is the family that will talk you out of doing it because they'll say, I don't think that's what God wants for you. Or better yet, I didn't raise you to do that. You know, we're all doctors in this family. We're all lawyers in our family. We're all successful people in this family. And so the fact that you're out here trying something that goes against what we've always, what we raised you to do, I, I don't think that's what God has for you. Even church family, people, one of the things, and, and I want to say this with most res utmost respect, but I also want to say it from one who had fallen prey to these words. I've had many people tell me, I don't think that's God's will for your life. And matter of fact, some did say, I don't think, some came out and said, that is not God's will for your life. Now, can I ask a question? If this is my life to live, how is it that people can tell you what God's will for your life is when you have a relationship with God for yourself? How wait. We have given too much leeway for people to speak into our lives and tell us that this is God's will for your life because it sounds good to their spirit for you. So here's the thing. You should have a relationship with God to where you've already known what God's will is for your life. And if I say something to you that is similar to what God has said or even exact, then all I'm doing is confirming what God has already told you. Do you hear that? We have a tendency today to go to church and it's almost like looking for the next fix. And the preachers have become the, the spiritual crack dealers and they deal you a drug and they give you a fix and they say this is what you're needing to make you feel better. And then you take it and you run with it because you never saw God for your will. You just took it because you trusted leadership. Only to get out there and suffer at the hands of what they said God's will is for your life. Then when you go back to them, they'll say, well, you, you must have done something wrong or you didn't seek God or you didn't pray or you moved too fast. What are you saying, Carrie? You've got to get away from people that are familiar with your life and you get one-on-one -on -one with God and hear from God and let God give you what his will is for your life. And then someone that God, and then God sent a total stranger. I'm telling you what I know. Because I like sometimes for strangers to come along and confirm what God has been speaking than those that are familiar with my life. Familiarity breeds contempt. You got to remember that now. Woo, that's some good stuff. And so you have social rejection. You have familial rejection and then social rejection. Social rejection, this type of rejection that often begins in childhood. Red Rover, Red Rover, send carry right over. Remember playing Red Rover or kickball or whatever game it was? when people had to choose who were going to be on their team. Do any of you ever remember being picked last? And you felt social rejection, that you were not good enough to be picked first, that even the nerd got picked before you did. Even the one that seemed to be a total misfit got picked before you did. And they said, well, I'm the last guy, so you got to go to this team. So you weren't even picked. By default, you went to the team because you were the last one. Anybody remember that? How it made you feel dejected, how it made you feel like a failure, and that when you went to kick the ball, you missed it and people laughed at you. That when they needed you to kick the score, the scoring run and to beat the game, you, you, you fouled out or you kicked the ball to somebody and they called it and they say, see, you suck. And then that mentality in your childhood began to set in. I suck. I suck at life. I suck at sports. I suck at relationships. I suck at happiness. And this dark shade of depression begins to set over your mind because of social rejection. You see a young lady and she chooses somebody else over you or you see a young man because you may be overweight and they're picking at you because you're overweight. And so now you go through your whole career of life and your, your life feeling rejected because socially it began in your childhood. That's why it's so vital to have therapists that will take you back in time and get you out of that rut of not being good enough. I, I preached on it last week. Not being good enough, but you are good enough. And I believe in you, not because of where you were, but because of where you are today. You've always been special and different. That's why people couldn't understand you and relate to you. Think about it. 
You trying to get into where you fit in, right? You trying to get in with people that, that get you. Well, when you're different, people are not going to get you. And when you throw away your identity to conform to what you think is acceptable, somebody better hear God this morning, you have a tendency then to try to get in where you fit in and you trade your identity for a cup of porridge or what, it, what I call porridge being acceptance or popular. No, I'd rather be different and be by myself and create the lifestyle that God has for me that will draw like-minded people than to conform to the social world around me and get lost and next I'm finding the next 20 to 30 years trying to get back to who my authenticity is as a man how many of you today can say Carrie that's been my problem I allow social rejection to shape me let's keep going rejection in a relationship who many of you can say amen to this People may experience rejection while dating or in a relationship. If you were in a relationship and your significant other cheated on you and you found the person, you said, well, who did you cheat with? Who would this person look like? And you saw them, you're like, I can't believe it. You left me for that. In the relationship before you even got married, you, you found yourself over here wanting to be with this person forever. And this thing you know, they didn't love you and you felt rejected because you wasn't good enough. And then you saw the one that they did go and marry and that person looked like just, ugh. And what happens usually in relationships like this, people have found themselves trying to become what the person left them for. Okay? You'll find yourself trying to be like that person. If she's got a 10 body and you got a number four, now you're in the gym trying to kill yourself because you're trying to look like the very thing that that person left you for. If, he, if she left you for a man that's muscular and you're kind of fat, now you're over here dieting and trying to kill yourself to look like the very thing that you feel is accepted to be in a great relationship when the reality is she couldn't appreciate you because you were too much for her or too much for him in the first place. Yo, let's come, let, 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 let me say something to you. There's an apple tree. I want you to see this apple tree. And this apple tree has a beautiful red apple on top of the tree. And the person wants an apple, but they say that that apple looks good and juicy. And I, and I want to climb up there and get it. But it takes work. So the person says, how bad do I want this apple? Do I want to climb the tree and go through the thorns and the, the leaves and cut myself and all these things I got to do to get to this top? Oh, well, I settle for one that's already fallen from the tree that has a little bruise. See, what are you saying, Carrie? When you change who you are, you're falling from your status on the tree down to the ground. And you're saying, well, look, I might as well be, do the same thing. It seems to be the end thing. That seems to be what people want. Because maybe my standards are too high. No, baby, your standards are where God wants them to be. But the person that God has for you is willing to climb the tree limb by limb, branch by branch, thorn by thorn to get to you because they see what the value of you. They see the value of your worth. Do you know the value of your worth? Are you tired of being by yourself to you're willing now to fall down off of your perch to the ground that somebody can just pick you up easily? Although now you're bruised emotionally or bruised in your inner being of, of, of self-esteem. No, I'd rather you stay up there, perched on that tree, on that limb and say, if you want me, this is where I am. Come and get me. And the right person that God has for you, I'm prophesying to somebody, the right person that God has for you is willing to do whatever they need to do because they were made to climb that tree. They were made to, to, to honor your standards. They were made to love you as you are. You don't have to go on this super diet and go from being a 10 to being a 2. You can stay a 10. They'll love you as the 10 that you are because you're being authentic in yourself. Can I get an amen? And then romantic rejection. Now, that, re that rejection in a relationship could be friendship, family. It can also be in um. And, you know social groups but then you have romantic rejection okay a romantic rejection can occur when a person acts for a date and is denied that goes back to what I said don't you lower your standards just for a date
Don't you lower your standards because you feel like your biological clock is ticking. So you just accept the thing, the first thing that comes smoking that says you look good because you need to have a baby before your eggs dry up. Baby, God will keep your eggs fertile. But what, 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 what sense does it make to marry a loser when you've been a winner You're waiting for God to bring, to bring you and bless you with a winner? You need to stop just accepting anything because I believe in you and everything about you and your uniqueness that God has for you. Okay? Somebody needs to hear that this morning. You got to stop settling and know that my standards are not too high. They are exactly what God wants them to be. Psalms 139, 13 and 14, which I love this, says, For you form my inward part. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Somebody need to underline that scripture, post it this week, somewhere in your house as your, um, as your I call it your weak anthem, to, to, to say it to yourself, your affirmation. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, my soul knows it very well why do i believe in you and why does rebecca believe in you and why does the way life seems to believe in you because you have been fearfully and wonderfully made and there is no competition no comparison to who you are but when you come off of who god has created you and try to be like me or like rebecca or like anyone else associated in your circle you are now doing a misdeed to god and to yourself because if you're fearfully and wonderfully made then that simply says to me brother and sister nothing is wrong with you in God's eye wait a minute so you mean I'm overweight there is something wrong with me listen God knew you were gonna be overweight when he made you but be the best overweight person you can be as you work on controlling it don't be miserable and on top of that doing things that are killing you you got to learn that I am unique. There is no other person like me in this world. No one else has what I have. So for that reason, let me stop conforming to the ways of this world and simply be me. Simply be me. That's why I love it when Moses, when I said before, went down, uh, when God said, Moses, go to Pharaoh. And Moses said, well, who should I say sent me? He says, tell him I am. When you understand who you are, that I am beautiful, that I am fabulous, that I am smart, that I am intellectual, that I am wonderfully made, I am fearfully made in God's eyes, then there is no comparison and you can say I am who I am and know that it is good enough. Know that what, see, it, you gotta start believing in yourself. It's not called, it's not prideful or egotistic. No, you are understanding that God has uniquely made me and why should I hold my head down when I am wonderfully made? God is showboating me. God is showing me up to the world and I'm the one that's embarrassed about God's creation? Think about it. That is an insult to God. But God, why do you make me a body like Halle Berry? But you want the issues that come with that great body? Do you want the issues that come with it? Because Halle Berry, although she may look beautiful, has some jacked up issues in her life. Just like everybody else does. Just like you do. Just like I do. Right? But I believe in you. I believe that whatever you set your mind to do, you can do it. But you got to understand there are two sets of mindsets that are working. And we're going to look at the mindset that you're stuck in, which is a fixed mindset. And then we're going to look at the growth mindset where you need to be in order for God to get you where you have to go. Let's go there now. Okay, here we go. Fixed mindset. In a fixed mindset, people believe their qualities are fixed traits and therefore they cannot change. Let's say it again. In a fixed mindset, people believe their qualities are fixed traits. In other words, I was born this way. I'll always be this way. I'll never change. But then there, they feel like that you, you cannot change. You feel like you, you're just stuck. But then there's the growth mindset, which is why I want you today to see you got to get out of this fixed mindset that, that this is just how it's going to be and get to a growth mindset. That in a growth mindset, people have an underlining belief 
that their learning and intelligence can grow with time, and there's that word again, experience. My, 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 my. How many of you right now, if you be truly honest, and I want you to type it in the screen. How many of you can say, Carrie, I feel that I'm stuck with a fixed mindset. I feel that my age, as I look at it now, I, I say, well, you know, I'm in my 40s or my 50s or my 60s. And I feel that this is just who I'm going to be. You may be in your 30s and feel like you've, you've come to the, the pinnacle of who you are. No. If you're stuck in a fixed mindset, you're basically accepting status quo as is. You're accepting the failures as this is who I am. And if God wanted me to have more, he would have given me more. Remember when you used to dream? Remember when you used to always have this imagination and a dream? And then one day you said, well, I guess I need to quit dreaming that because I'm failing. You're failing because you did not believe in yourself. You allow one situation, you allow one conversation, you allow one rejection to say, you know what, I'm not going through this again. You threw your hands up, you build a wall, and you say, I'm going to live in this kingdom, in my own inner kingdom forever. Your own little world. But then, people like myself, who are here to encourage you, Rebecca and, and the Way Life Center, and those that are part of our committee, we're here to teach you that, no, get a growth mindset, that there's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do greater through my experiences of failure. This is not what God wants me to stop. No, there is much more that God has for me. God wants to enlarge your territory, but you're stuck in this fixed mindset that, oh, this is all he wants, and you're holding on to the little teddy bear, and God's trying to give you a bigger one. What are you saying, Carrie? God wants you to lose that fixed mindset and start growing through your failures. Wait, 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 wait. See, see, think about it. I'm, I'm an old country boy. I, I remember back in the summer when they started getting, or the spring rather, when they started tilling the ground and getting it ready for harvest. I mean, for planting. So their harvest comes in the fall. But in the spring, they broke up the fallow ground, the hollow, the hollow ground. They, bore, they tore up the ground. And I remember it planting seeds. And I remember them covering it up. And they made a trip to the chicken house. Oh, come on, country folks. I might know what I'm talking about. See, you city slickers don't know what this is all about, but those from the, from the country understand. They would make a trip to the, to, the, to the chicken house, and they would get a truckload of manure. And it, manure, chicken manure stinks so bad. And they would come and they would spread it. The machine would go over the field spreading mess. Wait a minute, Kerry. How is it that the ground was broken, a seed was planted, and now you want to cover it with mess? So you don't understand how chemical processes work. And so they would cover the whole field. I remember a hot, sunny day, the smell would just come through the air. And you'd go, oh my God. And you knew somebody somewhere is fertilizing their field. You got to hear this this morning. See, right now you're complaining because of all the mess that's going on in your life. You're complaining because you watch the Pope's life with the Pope's, or you watch the way life center plant seeds in the hollow ground of your heart. The, the word tore open your heart, and we put seeds there. And now God says, now it's time to grow. But then this mess started happening in your life. Things in your life started stinking. Somebody feel God right now. Things in your life started becoming chaotic, messy, stinking, and you're like, this can't be the will of God. Oh, yes, it is. It's the will of God because he allows the mess to, to, to come in and fertilize the promise in your life. See, that's why you got to know we believe in you. I believe in you despite the mess you're going through right now. Because, see, if you understand the chemical breakdown of manure, it has nutrients inside of it that makes the ground rich. And it gives the seed all of the vitality and the nourishment it needs in the mess. Wait a minute, Kara. Are you serious? Come on, biologists. Back me up this morning. When you understand how mess works and how God breaks down the mess, because you wouldn't have prayed the way you prayed if it hadn't been for the mess that broke you down and made you hit your face and cry out to God and say, God, whatever it is you need me to do, I'm willing to do it. See, it came through the mess. Had it not been for the divorce, you never would have got counseling that was needed to help you deal with the childhood issues that you struggle with of acceptance of love. But it took mess 
to bring about the miracle. There is a chemical breakdown in mess that fertilizes the promise in your ground. Come on, somebody. That's why you have to change your mindset from being fixed to growth. And it is through mess. It is through the, the manure of life. Oh, come on. Somebody should lift your hand and say, God, I thank you for the mess. I thank you for the stench of the mess. Because it's the stench that other people say, oh, I don't want to be around you. You're negative. But then it was the, the loneliness. It was the being ostracized that made you sit down before God and say, God, listen, I'm sorry. I give my life to you to use as you seem fit. And that seed now starts to grow, starts to sprout because of the mess you had to endure. Come on, put those hands together and give God a praise right now. Oh my God. What a word, what a word, what a word. Jesus. Let's get ready to bring this thing home. And so we have a fixed mindset conversation versus a growth mindset conversation, okay? The fixed mindset says, you are, are you sure you can do it? Maybe you don't have the talent. See, that's that fixed mindset. It's always stuck in what you don't have or your lack. But the growth mindset says in his answer, I'm not sure I can do it now, but I think I can learn to do it with time and effort. You have to talk to yourself. You have to tell your fixed mindset that we're not going to stay here. So your fixed mindset wants to sit there and have this little boo-hoo, uh, what's what was me crying and, and sobbing story. We can't do it. Help me, help me, help me. But the growth mindset is going, wait a minute, I think I can do it. I think I can learn from my failures versus wallowing in it as the fixed mindset is trying to do. I think I can is a little train sense. I think I can. I think I can. And the more you begin to encourage yourself, the more you begin to say to yourself, I think I can, the more you will. Somebody should hear me this morning because you. I, I want you to know Carrie believes in you. Rebecca believes in you. The Way Life Center believes in you, but you got to see through a growth mindset that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, not within my own natural strength, but in the strength of God. And you'll stop sobbing and wallowing in failure and you'll say, wait a minute, hold up. I got this. I got this. And if anybody was called to do this, I was called. So let me get out of my waddling and let me get out of my, my sadness and let me get out of my old woe is me status and let me say, I think I can. And give a little ounce of God, a little, a little crack so God can come in and do the rest. That's why this message this morning is so powerful. I know that the mess you're going through right now has got you questioning whether or not you have the ability. But I know God who is greater than your mess. I even know God who allowed people to go into your past and pull the mess. Because manure is the past of what chickens have given out. But even mess has miracle ingredients inside of it. So what? The divorce was nasty and ugly. Baby, it didn't kill you. You are resilient. You pressed through it. You didn't die. Yeah, you may have lost your hair. You may have lost weight, but you didn't lose your mind. Even when it looks like the mind was leaving, God hit the, hit the hand of a, of a nervous breakdown and said, leave them alone because there is just work for them. to do. They have so great work to do in them right now. It's so much great work inside of them to do, but you've got to see that God believes in you. And I do too. Come on, somebody. I want you to type in the screen this morning, I think I can. And then as you say it one or two times, then type in there, I know I can. I know I can be successful in anything that I set my mind to do. And I refuse to give in to doubt, fear, and even shame. I've been divorced multiple times and I don't like it. I've told you that before, but yet I can teach you how to know what love is about through failure. And people say, well, how can you listen to Karen and Rebecca? They both told you they're multiple divorcees because of our truth. It's your truth that sets you free. But what makes it unique is when you can see that even though we went through this and went through that, love brought us together and we love love. 
Don't let because of you, what you failed through stop you from going forward and still searching, searching for it. There are people out here that want to love you, but you got to let people love you. You got to let people come into your heart. You got to let people be able to give you them. You can't live your life in fear of what if. You can't live your life of, well, what if this time it doesn't work? Or, you know, I tried it and when I tried it before it failed. Stop living in the past. Stop living in the past failures. I didn't give up on love and love didn't give up on me. I'm here to tell you this morning that God wants to change your fixed mindset to a mindset of growth. He wants you to look at what you've come through and look at it as mess. But that seed, that promise that's inside of you is being, it's being, it's being, uh, it's giving you some fertilization. You feel some more hope this morning. You feel some hope this morning that if Carrie can do it, if Rebecca can do it, if my friends and family can do it, I can do it. I just got to change this thing right here. As a man think it's so easy. I got to change that mindset of being a failure. Because I'm not. I'm not a failure. Neither are you. You are not a failure. You are successful. You are fearfully and wonderfully made by God. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with you. What's wrong is that you bought into the concept of your failures versus I can do all things and do it. Do it because God has called you to do it and do it because it's part of your destiny. And now it's time to walk in your authenticity and walk in your purpose. What does that mean? Will I lose some people along the way? Yes, you will. There are some people that God never meant for you to go on this journey with you. Let them go. If they walked away from you, let them go. Somebody need to hear that this morning. You crying because somebody left you. Let them go. They were never assigned to your destiny. It was only, they were only part of a part of the journey, but they're not there to go to the finish line. Let them go. Let's pray. Father God, I glorify you this morning for a powerful word. I believe in you. God, there are many watching this morning that are hurting. There are many that are watching this morning that have struggled with self-esteem, that have struggled with their self-ego. They've struggled, God, with life. There are many, God, that are even sitting in depression right now. And this morning, I speak life over them. I speak life to their dark circumstances, life to their situations. I speak life in darkness. God, you called us, you formed us in, your, in our mother's womb, and you uniquely and wonderfully and fearfully made us. And although we experience rejection in our childhood and social rejection, relationship rejection, even romantic re uh, re rejection, yet we still stand believing in love. We still stand believing in you. We believe, God, that there is a destiny over our lives, and there's still purpose for everything that you call us to do. Every morning we wake up, is another day to walk into our purpose. Now, right now, God, I pray that this message plants a seed in the hearts, in the souls of those that are listening, and that that seed would take sprout, and that the mess that they're going through will fertilize the seed, and they'll come forward, God, sprouting up through the ground, growing to be all that you call them to be, growing to be unique. Bless your people. Let this word find a place in their heart today. I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. I pray that you've heard this message this morning. I pray that you know that we here at the, Life Way, at the Way Life Center believe in you. That our Sunday Love Stream broadcast is all about the embitterment of you bringing you onto another level, bringing you to the way that God has for you. Okay, I want you to know that God has a way for you and that way that God has for you is a way of life. And not only that you have life, that you have it more abundantly. We love to say here the Way Life Center is blessings and abundance. We believe in walking in the blessings of God and in the abundance of those blessings 
to have so much that we can give to others. All right. So let's go right now to offering. I want you to partner with us. I want you to partner with the Way Life Center, and to do so is by tithes and offerings. So, how can you do so? You can help support. Donate this morning. You can visit the Way Life Center. You can go to the, the uh, website here, and we're going to post it again in the comment section right now. Or you can go to Cash App, dollar sign the Way Life Center. And many of you have been a great blessing to us. So much you have given to help us with the broadcast, to further what God has to doing, to reach people all over the world. We have people in Africa, the UK, uh, Guyana, Guyana, all the various places, Mexico. We have people in Canada. We have people in Brazil that write us, that work with us, that say, we love you. We love what you're doing. We love the teaching and the concept of the Way Life Center. This morning, we want you to sow seeds and partner with us. If you have uh, thousands you want to sow or just pennies, be a blessing to us that this word has blessed you today. Because we love you here at the Way Life Center. And I believe that's great things that God has in store for you. So that's where you can sow your seed. Go to the website at PayPal or you can cash out at the Way Life Center. And anything that you do will be blessed and received in love. Amen. So God bless you as we go this morning. I thank you for joining us. I thank you for tuning into the Way Life Center's Love Stream broadcast. And I pray that you heard God loud and clear this morning. He believes in you. I believe in you. The Way Life Center believes in you. I want you to inbox me here. You can go on our inbox there on Facebook or write us. And tell us how this message has blessed you. You can leave us a message here even in YouTube. Tell us how it's blessed you. Say, Carrie, you don't know it or not, but the messages that you and Rebecca gives, they bless us so tremendously. And, you know, it's only when I found the way life center that I really started seeing life through different lenses. And I love what you all have given us, the truth, the way for me. That's what many of you have said to us when you wrote us and write us in various letters. You've shown us a way that we never even dreamed of that has really brought life and brought it more abundantly. And that's what we love doing here at the Way Life Center, all right? Well, also, listen, we're gonna also have links up in here for our ALPCU, Abundant Life Path Course University. We wanna make sure that you get into our spring semester that's coming up in February. Many people are now uh, asking about it. It's our coaches, university, and many people. Let me tell you, we've, we've been so blessed here this year to graduate coaches and now we're starting our 2021 registration now to become a life coach with the ALP, Abundant Life Path Course University, Abundant Life Path University. Join the curriculum. Starts in February, but you can start now paying on your uh, tuition. If you want to be part of it, there's different value, there's various payment plans, but I'm telling you, you want to jump in, spots are always limited and we sell out fast. 50 spots go like that. And I think we were probably uh, maybe a quarter of the way already because we just opened up registration last week, week before last. And we're already a quarter of the way fulfilling the class. What does that mean? You want to get in now. You don't want to wait until right at the end and say, I want to get in the class because once the doors are full, when, when the class is full, the doors are closed. So get in now. There's a link that's going to be posted in the, in the uh, description area where you can go and look at the class, set up your consultation, with, with, which we call an interview and get yourself going all right those of you that are watching who have already gone through our class just comment real quick and tell them something they don't want to miss we say that the life coaches are the new ministers and that's what we teach we, we teach spiritual coaching here at the way life center through the abundant life path university all right so i want you to go and visit it all right so listen share this broadcast put somebody's name in the comment section Copy the link and send it to someone. Say, hey, listen, the Way Life Center is a blessing. They have truly, truly been a blessing to me. I know that their ministry will be a blessing to you. All right. So God bless you. Pray for us here. Pray for myself and Rebecca. So many great things that God has for us to do. But the one thing I have to leave with you is that title. I believe in you. Don't you ever give up. You keep pushing and watch God bless you in the mess. He will give you a miracle. God bless you. Blessings and abundance to all. 
Until next week, be blessed now. Bye-bye.